Hello, we're in Magic of Voxel right here. We're going to go next to Mixamo. Uh, in order to facilitate that change of context, we're going to export as an OBJ file, which is in actually three different files. It's an OBJ, uh, an MTL file, and a PNG file. So what you do is you export those, you wrap them up in a zip file, or however you want to say that, compress them into a zip file, and then you put them into the Magic of Voxel. So I've already got my jimbo.zip file right here that contains the three exported files when you export as an OBJ. So now if we go over to the Mixamo site, what we can do is we can click upload a character. Um, and at this point, we can go ahead and do the um, placement of our zip file in that little drag drop area they give us. And allow that the time necessary to get up there and there's our character uh just want to make sure it's showing up okay uh, then we can go ahead and apply the little markers here for rigging it and we'll set these markers up i'm not going to get overly tied up in this i think it's pretty good we'll set the knees up migrate about there And then we'll do the groin right around there. I think we're okay. I will typically uh, knock down the, knock it down to like no fingers uh, or two fingers. We'll do two fingers right here. Maybe have a little bit of uh, hand motion. Okay, you want to be uh, anytime you're doing anything here uh, with generating, particularly um, like geometry and uh, underlying like bones and so forth. Try to. Um, Try to be mindful of that and reduce it whenever possible. All right, so now we're gonna see if it takes the markers that I placed and see if it goes into like the default animation uh, once it's auto-rigged. Otherwise it'll say, oops, sometimes it does that uh, where the markers didn't quite work. But this seems to have worked. Looking at it right now, it seems to be okay. All right, so that's all right. So what we're going to do is go next um, and load that in there. I'm just going to get um, a talking animation. I'm going to use that for like an idle. So I'm just going to look up talking and typically uh, try to find what meets your needs in terms of, you know, the context that you're using it in whatever application space it's in. 118 frames is, you know, maybe a uh, good down the road, uh, you can even optimize this more in Blender. You can kind of, there's different ways to reduce the number of frames, but for right now, let's just get through it. Uh, I'm, I'm fine with this. Maybe I like to put the arm space maybe out a little bit further, kind of tweak it a little bit. If you want it to be more expressive, you can turn it to overdrive and it kind of has more of uh, maybe a cubic or quartic kind of uh, animation curve where it kind of more emphatically moves into the hand position but we'll just leave the overdrive right where it is and the hand height if you want to lift the hands higher then of course you know i like that as well lift the hands a little higher a little bit farther apart okay so and you can go in here and trim the frames as well if you have, have wanted to uh pull out certain frames usually that ends up messing it up all right so go ahead and let's just go ahead and click download over here now, uh, you only need the skin with one of these, which means basically the, uh, the, the mesh. So let's go ahead and just say we're gonna go ahead and we're not gonna do keyframe reduction here. You could um, also drop the, you know, mess with the frames per second and so forth. I just say, okay, the first thing I'm gonna bring in, I'm gonna bring it in with the skin or the mesh. I'm gonna download that. It'll be an FBX that's entitled according to the animation. So it'll talking. And it's five because I've done this at different times in the past. Um, now what I can do is I can call this, if I show it in the finder, I can like rename it. Um, and if I rename it, like, let's say, um, Jimbo underscore I-D-L-E, that would be fine. I'll put it right there in my downloads. And then I'll go over here and I'll look up like a running and we'll take this uh, one of these running animations, maybe that one right there. We'll see how many frames it is. 19, that's nice and short. 
click in place. I will use the in place, but I like to put the arms out a little bit wider. Again, it's personal preference. You can tweak it however you so desire. Um, this time when we download, we want to uh, do it without the skin because you only need that mesh once. Not that you couldn't get rid of it in Blender, but there's no it's not necessary. And you can go ahead and download it, and it will be entitled based upon the, the name of the animation. In this case, it was running. So I'm going to show that in the finder. I'm going to give it a more illustrative name than that. I'm going to call it Jimbo underscore running. And yeah, so got those two animations. And the first one has the mesh in it as well. They're in FBX files. So that's important to note. They're in FBX files. Let me go ahead and go into Blender. Get rid of the default cube in Blender. We'll pull in the, first of all, the idle file. Go import FBX. Go ahead and to our downloads. We'll get that uh, jimbo.idle file. So go in here and go to the jimbo idle and bring that in. Probably have to do some scaling. Uh, as you can see, jimbo is very, very small there. Um, so let's go ahead and just do um, S and drag until it's like reasonable size. So let's just go S and maybe just drag. You want to keep it, you don't want to have a negative scaling. So maybe something like that. You can actually check the dimensions and it's good to, uh, to do that. Um, now the animation with the scaling, if I go over here and click on like the dev shader, uh, which is the second one from the end. So it's a little bit less taxing on the, um, the full EV shader, which is a little bit more taxing on the um, GPU. Uh, so for right now, this is pretty, uh, pretty good. If you wanted to get more specific about it, when you bring it in here, you can measure it, check it out. And that's actually about 1.97 meters. So that's actually pretty good. I, I eyeballed it. That's, that's not bad. So that's a decent, you know, size, um, realistic for a character in a game. So once you have that, if you just press a space bar, you actually can see the animation right off the bat. Now in past versions of Blender, this is 2.8.3 or 2.83. I mean, um, in past versions, what we have had to do is jump through a couple extra hoops. Now you really, uh, can get away with doing very minimal, which is awesome. Um, nonetheless, even though we can get away with it, I'm going to go up to the armature in the scene collection at the top. I'm going to rename uh, over there uh, the armature. Actually, let me just do it by double clicking on it. I'm going to call that uh, Jimbo, whatever that's my character. Um, I'm also going to go down. You can do this different ways. You can go into the animation. You can. Yeah, there's always a million and one ways to do this. But if you go into the, the animation, this particular uh, word animation, not armature, but animation, double click on that, then you can name that. Um, I'm going to call that idle with a lowercase i. So that's going to be the actual animation data. So I'm going to call that idle. Uh, so if I go down here in the bottom uh, and I switch over to, uh, let's just say, I switch, up, switch over to the dope sheet and then put the dope sheet into action editor view. I'll see that that, yeah, that name idle right there is the actual name of the animation. Now, the nice thing that's been added in uh, 2.8 that wasn't available, available before 2.8 um, is the fact to actually push down the animation, uh, which basically push down kind of means that it's taking the animation data and it, it's exposing it at that point. Uh, basically as an object or an object property to the exporter, the GLTF exporter. So whenever we go up here, file export um, GLTF, it's going to run basically a Python script. Now it's, uh, no, it's, a, it's actually built in right now. So they would have actually programmed it in C++, but basically the API um, for exporting and so forth has access to um, the data once you push it down. So prior to that, it won't be available for export, but once you push it down, it is available. So if I 
push it down. Now it goes away, which is fine. You can see it in the in the nonlinear animation editor, but it's it's still there. Um, you don't have to go anywhere else. So unless you're going to tweak the animation or something, let's just presume you're not. Then we're just going to go with go with it like this. The next thing we want to do is bring in uh, another animation because usually that's why you want to do this because you don't want to simple one animation on your character. Usually we want maybe four or five animations, but I'm only, only going to do two because it makes the point. Import FBX and we're going to go and grab the second animation, uh, which was the Jimbo running. Um, and then, yeah, same type of thing. So another armature is imported right now. Temporarily, I'm just going to read. Actually, I just double click on it. I'm going to rename it temporarily, um, maybe running capital R, and then I'll down, go down under the animation data, and I will call that maybe running lowercase r. And we can see that's what shows up right here. Um, and that's because, and that's showing up. And what is here? Here is the action editor view of the dope sheet. So the dope sheet panel with the action editor view um, is what I'm looking at right here. So if we go to the, the panel is in, is a dope sheet panel. So right there, but um, the dope sheet panel has different views you can put it in. So I'm in action editor view for it. So um, I want to basically take this running animation data and I want to apply it to this other object here, to the Jimbo object. How can I do that? Well, it's easy right now. All I do is click on the Jimbo object. Now the Jimbo object is highlighted. Um, the other one is a tiny, tiny skeleton. We're not even worried about the scale of it. But in, in certain cases, if you're ever scaling during the animation, then you would have to scale both of the things properly. But here it doesn't matter. The transform uh, doesn't include uh, scaling, so we're good. So over here, so I'm going to go Jimbo. Uh, we're going to go and look here, and we have running available in the dropdown. So we can kind of steal the animation data from the other one. Now you can see Jimbo also has running. So if I push that, so if I go ahead and play that, whoops, so I'm not playing right now. Now if I play that, it's not doing anything because running only happens at the very beginning over here. It's only the first part of it. All right, so, but if I switch it over to uh, idle, you can see that we still have the idle. And then if I switch it back to running, um, again, running only exists. You can see the free keyframes down here, basically. And we could, you know, make this, optimize this to keyframes and change things. We're not going to do that, though. All right, so there's the running. There's the idle. Uh, and now you can just go ahead and export. So when you export here, uh, you want to go to the GLTF. Uh, it'll export a GLB file. I'm going to call this, um, uh, maybe just call it Jimbo with all caps. I think I've already exported another one. Jimbo, but let's go ahead into the maybe the desktop. Jimbo with all caps, and we'll export that. Uh, what we'll do here is go over to um, let's go over to this viewer or GLTF viewer. Maybe I'll close that up, uh, and then we'll just go and put that in there and see what we see. So okay, so let's go ahead and. Uh, Maybe move that so we can see a little bit better. All right, so we got the character right there. Go to the animation. We got idle running and running. Oh, because I didn't get rid of the other one, uh, I got the extra running. Okay, I am so sorry about that. Uh, and they're both, I have like two copies of the running, which isn't what I want. I have extra data in here that I wouldn't necessarily want. So if I go over here, idle, um, or I can put the running on instead. Now I got both of them. So what was the mistake that I made? Oh wow, I have two animations with the same uh, label. So um, the GLTF allows you to kind of make these kind of uh, uh, namespace collisions for uh, you know the names of certain things that are at the same level, um, and that's just part of the the spec allows you to do that, and that's what I. That's what I did. Um, so if I go back in here, I got I need to get rid of that earlier running, um, the one that I brought in that was just the animation. So if I get rid of that, now I'll go ahead and export. 
So you can see, yeah, I haven't done this. <laughs> Probably haven't done this for a while. Export a GLTF, Jimbo, export it. Now let's just see if we have one single um, running uh, reference there. All right, so let's go ahead and refresh this, see if it actually works properly or not. And, uh, oh, there it is, seems to be um, good. And we open this up, and of course now we got only one reference to that running data. So we can put it in running. Of course, you're not gonna want, you can blend, you can actually blend animations, right? Because you can basically run them at the same time over top of each other. You typically wouldn't want to do that. Calling them is pretty easy as well with uh, like A-Frame or even with just 3JS by itself. But that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, you can pack as many as you see fit in terms of the animations that you're putting in and then you can access them uh, declaratively, at least initially, in like A-Frame uh, to set the initial animation maybe, and then you can imperatively access them via the JavaScript and, you know, attach the change in animation to events and have a great time at it and have a wonderful day.